happy trip to Fane Coma, everybody. This is Solar Gray, your cinematic source. We're coming with you today, coming to you today. Food hungover, full of bread and turkey meat, and lots of cobbler. Lots and lots and lots of cobbler. I saw the picture of that cobbler. That thing was 20 pounds. I'm jealous. That, that, that thing was 20 pounds. 20 pounds of peach cobbler. That's right. And how much of that was you? Hmm? How much did you eat? Maybe. No, 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 no. Just honestly, I had about two teaspoons, so maybe about a third of a pound. Yeah, third of a pound. I just, yeah, just, it was dense. It was dense. I, I, I used a lot. But, um, and today we've got another special guest. We've got DW coming at you. Well, you know, should I say Dan Will or, you know, Dan? Just go by DW. Yeah, that's right. We've got, um, but how do they find you on the online things? DW so, McCann. That's right. I'm here with DW McCann. Um, good old friend of mine that, you know, loves Darkwing Duck as much as I do. Mm -hmm. And, um, welcome to part Darkwing, two. Darkwing, Doctor Who. There's a lot of good DWs out there. Yeah, it's true. It's true. There, I, I wish I knew some sort of ultra white industrialist companies. I can be like, yeah, it's DW Finch. And they make sprockets. You know, I don't even know what the fuck a sprocket is, but they make a lot of it. As I, and the just, um, I saw it on the Jetsons. But, um, yeah, and we're here talking part two of our Justice League review that um, went up not too long ago because um, there's a lot to say about this movie since every Warner Brothers movie is divisive, but today we're actually going to talk about Justice League and other mediums so that we can possibly try and hit our fingers on um, what people say when they say they want it good or did they fuck it up or they did it right. So we want to talk about the Justice League and the DC characters in other mediums over time. So let's take an in-depth look at that. But first, let's talk about the great big foul in the room. Thanksgiving was this week. Ugh. Yeah, see, I don't and have the trip to fan. I had carne asada. Oh, we you... had turkey as an option, but the carne <laughs> was really, really good. So I had the carne asada. For those of you international guys, or for those of you guys like that aren't local, we record this from California. So there's no color changing of the leaves, and there's no snow, and it was 85 degrees on Thanksgiving. Oh, it was 91 where I was. Well, yeah, you're Record you're breaking. you're on the other side of the hills, so yeah, it, it's you know hottest Thanksgiving since what 1877. Since records begin, from when I heard. Yeah, it was terrible, just terrible. But we could do the Thanksgiving turkey with the stuffing and the dressing and all that stuff. But I'm from the ghetto, and he's from California. <laughs> So we got ribs and peach cobbler and 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 sweet potato pie and with the option of carne asada, um, wet burritos and things with avocados in them. So we're a little weird. We're a little weird. We're California, so but suck I it. did have to end it with the <laughs> traditional pumpkin pie. Of course, and it was, my family actually Wait. wasn't going to have a pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie or pumpkin spice latte? Uh, pumpkin pie. Okay. All uh, right. No, no, All no, right. no, no. I'm, I'm not that. California. You're not that white. Okay. I was born here, but I did not have the 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 true to the core love of the pumpkin spice. Um, although I was surprised to find out I didn't know how many pumpkin pies are not made of pumpkin. Really? Yeah. If you look at the ingredients, pumpkin is not actually what most pumpkin pies are made out. What are they made from? Uh, like squash and, and you know other other things. If you read the like pumpkin pie filler, I am so gonna have to get a picture of that yeah, and broadcast it's, that. It's, it's interesting. I just found that out. This pumpkin year, pie right? filler, butternut squash. What the fuck? We just like not making cinnamon. Don't judge us. Oh, it's, it, pretty much it's that flavoring. Oh man, that, that... with a little bit of, of uh, whipped cream on top. That's Thanksgiving to me. Yeah. No matter what the meal beforehand is, if it ends with a slice of pumpkin pie with whipped cream, I'm My, minus peach cobbler and French vanilla ice cream, because I, I may peach be from Ca every day. I well, don't need that specifically one day. See, you say that, but then considering like how many I make and how much work it is, I can't eat peach cobbler every day. Two or three times a week, yeah, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. Um, matter of fact, gonna have some a little later on today, because you know since uh, we do CPT. Um, for holidays or colored people time mom is having her thing today so i made an extra cobbler for her so we're going down to the mom's house just going hey mom how's it going now put food in our faces and she'll be like yeah no problem i love well, feeding you cook. oh yeah she, she can cook she throws the fuck down that's what she does 
you know, a lot of you got y'all know what I'm talking about. Not just the ones that have been, but y'all got mamas just like mine, where it's like, hey it's mom, let's go out for dinner. Love. Go out for dinner. I ain't find no damn restaurant that cook as good as I do. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's me. That's not my mom. But yeah, so that that's what we're doing later on today. Um, so yeah, and and how was stuff with you? You were talking a little bit earlier about you got sucked into another contract. Another so I I I've about three years ago I went back to my original dream of being in the entertainment industry. I tried it for a while. As a matter of fact. Uh, I was the body double, photo double for Thor in the first Thor movie. Or for, for not Thor. I'm not that buff. Uh, for Volstagg in the first Thor movie. The uh, fat one. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is that this is like tremendously fat for Hollywood. Yeah, it's true. So, it, like, it's true. He, he had a little bit of a paunch. That was all. But I got to wear the armor and do it. I'm Volstagg. I have dad bod. Now it's give me turkey leg. Really was. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of gave it up for a while, went into IT, and then three years ago, like, had lined up everything to make another stab at it, specifically in voice acting. So I've been, uh, since then, ramping up, uh, doing a lot of on-camera stuff, but mostly mostly background in TV shows and stuff like that. But uh, as far as uh, voiceover, um, I did the voice for Bob Ross Sylvanas on the game Smite. I did the voice for um, uh, David... Uh, which is the da- the stepdad in Life is Strange, the the prequel, uh, before the storm, um, and so I've got I've got some some credit starting to build up, and you know they say it takes about three years before you start seeing the stuff. And yeah, and that you can't be famous where you're from. So, oh God, no. but yeah. I also do a lot of live events and sing at a lot of places, and apparently I just found out uh, this past week that I am definitely traveling to Northern California to sing at the Dickens Fair. Uh, for hey. the last two weekends of the event. Hey, it's only a 300-mile work commute. You got this. Well, yeah, but I'll, I'll be leaving tomorrow morning, so we're <laughs> at, uh, getting up at 3.30 so I can leave by 4.30 to make it there in time for opening gate. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. That's about right. My, so. fam- my, my uh, chosen family is having our... Uh, Thanksgiving tonight. Oh I, dear God! I did a family last night. Now yeah, I did a chosen family tonight. Well, that's and, uh, that. I call that the blood relations dick gig, and then the family. Yes. See that? That's the whole thing. It's like yeah, they're the people that you were born into, but we're gonna stop right there so I can say, hey, and if you guys, you know, don't don't get me wrong. I know people like starting the conversation right off, but I want to let them know where they could get a hold of us to give us um, stuff like that. So you can hit us up at back in the deck at gmail.com. Just give a little in the subject line, put uh, the name of the show, which like I said is Buster Recap and let us know some of the stuff that you guys might want us to cover. Um, you can also reach me personally um, in nowhere because I don't want you talking to me personally, but I am directly linked to the back in the deck stuff, so just put CC Solar and all that stuff. You you guys know how the internet works better than I do. I'm middle aged, and you can find us on the Twitters at Back in the Deck. Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Back in the Deck or Bid P, and look us up on YouTube on Back in the Deck and Bid P. And remember, if you like what you see here, like, subscribe, share. If you don't like what you see here, like subscribe and share that way you can thumbs down everything that we do or even better give us a thumbs up and talk shit in the comments and if you like what we do um let us know and we can hook you up with a don- donation spot also check us out at back in the deck or www.backinthedeck.com um for a lot of the full versions of everything that we do here or hit us up on patreon so that we can hit the light on at patreon slash back in the deck and where can they find you you dw uh two easy two easiest ways to find me are in twitter verse uh at bardic underscore dw or just look up dw mccann or on facebook i have a public page at dan dw mccann uh either one of those would would, uh, reach me all right well that's good to know good to know so as we were talking about chosen family ah i had chosen family because, you know, you can't pick your friends, but you can pick your friend's nose. But you can also say, you know what? I don't like that cousin. I, I like the other version <laughs> of it that I heard once, which is you can pick your friends. You can pick your nose. Mm-hmm. But you can't roll your friends up into balls and stick them under the table. Well, you can't roll your friends up in a ball and stick them under the table. By so the well. way, watch your feet. feet. Uh, <laughs> Uh, our guest from Monday might still be there. I, I, I don't sleep much. Um, so let's talk about 
um the elephant in the room um again in our last episode we talked and actually gave our movie review um for the league itself and the league is honestly like i said we we gave we gave the league um a decent rating so i want to know um what your thoughts on the dealio and the gig is like well, you saw the justice League. i did i did i went in i tried to keep as open a mind as possible uh, i was not a fan of bvs um really i was not i know i know that's apparently such a rare opinion no, um, it really it it was critically acclaimed not like suicide well, squad look, or one of the things that <sighs> keeps being put forward i've seen in multiple places people talk about the uh, finances of how much money it made in box office and that's proof that it's a hit but it's not necessarily just because people went and saw it doesn't necessarily mean people enjoyed it and a lot of people <laughs> seeing something you know especially an opening weekend means that people are hoping that it'll be good because you know you don't very few people there are those that go to see something because they want it to be bad and they want to be able to, to you know talk crap about it but Really, if you go to see it on opening weekend, you're probably a fan. And I, you know, w when I was a kid, uh, my family, uh, the three youngest, we all had these larger than any book I've ever owned uh, coloring books that were, if you fold them in half, still larger than pretty much any book I've ever owned. Uh, and they were, you know, themed around a, a superhero. So I had my, one of my sisters was big on Superman. One of my sisters was big on Spider-Man and I had the Batman one. And okay. The back page of it. The cover was cardboard. The back page was a able to be cut out mask that you could wear of the <laughs> superhero. So I had my Batman mask. I had them. I went as Nightwing as a kid for, you know, uh, Halloween a couple of times. I went as Batman a couple of times. I had a huge, as a matter of fact, I worked at the Marvel themed restaurant uh, Marvel Mania that was short-lived in uh, Universal Studios. I remember that. Well, I was one of the security team, and we all had call signs based on characters, and I had to be Moon Knight because it was the closest to Batman I could get. The dude Marvel that universe. needs his own Netflix show. I, I will I've tell heard you. it's in the works, and I'm a big fan of Moon Knight. I've Especially, heard a lot of things, but yeah. Well, so the, let's the hope. The stuff they were doing toward the end there with the multiple personality and the hallucinations and stuff was really interesting. But I also am a huge fan and own the first, uh, I think, first 10 issues of the Fists of Khonshu series. Where oh, he had the, yeah. His strength waxed and waned with the moon and stuff. But anyways, um, I've been a, been a Batman fan for pretty much as long as I've known comics. And I want to see it done right. Um, I think that... Uh, Michael Keaton to me is is still one of the best, um, you know, barring Adam West who is Batman. Um, <laughs> but Michael Keaton was one of the best. We brought in Val Kilmer. He was a good Batman in my opinion, but a horrible Bruce Wayne. In that you, if you met that Bruce Wayne, you'd know he was Batman. That's fair. That's, That's my very only fair. problem with him. He wasn't a bad, you know sophisticated billionaire but it was like oh yeah that guy's batman yeah, that guy's got to be batman yeah you got you have to be a personality who throws him off which i thought that uh christian bale did great in his series when he was like drunk and hanging out in the in the fountain <laughs> of the hotel well let's face it the only problem that people really had with bale other than the massive underbite was um well, god what was it i think it was the way that he delivered the lines his line delivery. Well, there, but there was a beautiful video somebody did online of the conversation between Bane and Bruce uh, and Batman, where it was because they couldn't understand each other, and when they finally <laughs> cleared up, like they were, no, they became best friends. Oh wow! It, yeah, it was just the two of them talking, and they couldn't understand each other. Uh, I, I'm I'm gonna have to take a look at that video. Um, so yeah, so I wanted to talk about. Um, today mm -hmm. um one of your I'll, I'll get your rating on the justice league movie closer to the end of um right. closer to the end of the episode today ha so you guys are gonna have to wait because you know advertising marketing that's right I, I, I talked to someone in marketing before i convinced them to kill themselves and um, they said wait till the end it's what the news does yay um but as far as the stuff that we saw in the justice league and yes. it's it's coming up on the second weekend so we'll know if it's a success. We'll know if it's a success Monday, the Monday coming up, because um, the drop off between week one and week two, that's the real that's the real um, real indicator. 
Well, like, looking into the numbers also, I was really interested to find out how many things, and a lot of the DC stuff especially, do so much better overseas. I mean, we see what our box office was, but then when you look at what its box office was in China or in, you know, they have these huge booms there that we sit there and aren't fond of it or have our issues with it, but another country loved it and that becomes still a profitable movie. Well, sort of. I mean, let's let's take the thing that everyone is comparing the Justice League to, the Avengers. Mm -hmm. That movie made enough to make Solomon blush. Oh, yeah. In the United States mm -hmm. and overseas, it did. It had that it same had weekend, both. exactly. Yeah. So that became the new metric mm -hmm. that the entertainment industry tends to use. So if it does poorly in the U.S. Um, and great overseas, they kind of look at it like, well, if it had done better in the U.S., it would have done better overseas because, as we know, a lot of corporate executives mm, they tend to see things in a very clear and measured manner. Well, yes and no. Because there are there are other movies that have started purely gearing themselves towards the Asian market. Truth. Because there's more people there, and if you make the Asian market oh, blow up, not just more who people. Cares what the U.S. market thinks yeah, of it. So not that, that's hmm. happening in some of the movies. Well, yeah, that's why Ice Age keeps getting made. Mm -hmm. You know, because of Russia, Putin loves that bear. Well, <laughs> there's also uh, a lot of the Fast and Furious stuff does extremely well overseas. It's true, and does okay here. But it's going to keep getting made because as long as overseas loves that stuff, they're going to do it. And they're going to release it here and get the money they can for it. But You know, I would, normally, I would normally tell a joke about Tyrese at this point. But I'm deciding to give my old boy a break. Okay, I'm, I'm going to give him a break. He got his daughter. They kidnapped a dude. So, you know, let's just, let, let's just give him a break on that because Fast and Furious in the future, eh, we'll see. Well, I, just, I still get a kick out of that first movie, which kind of, you could tell that they had to end it in a hurry because they just have everything leading up to a moment where you have the two of them sitting in cars and suddenly, wait, we got to get out of here. And you have a car chase. Like there wasn't, the storyline I think got like cut out of it at the point that leads <laughs> to that final car chase. Um, because it's car porn. Let's yeah. face it. Everybody fast forwards oh, yeah. to the next car yeah. chase. Again, uh, the guys at Double Toasted were talking about Fast and Furious in space. I'm there. With rockets. Hell yeah. Yeah. And, I'm in. And if they're racing on the moon, dinosaur. Then we got Fast and Furious meets Jurassic Park on no, the no, moon. No, no, no. The dinosaurs, you take it to the center of the earth. Hmm? Oh, no, 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 no. no. You, we're not ready for that yet. What? No, seriously. But I think that's you why the rockets. You ready for moon, but not ready for center of the earth? No, no. Center of the earth. That We've been to the moon. We can imagine that. There is only so far suspension of disbelief goes. But we also know that there are no dinosaurs there. So if you want the dinosaurs, you do have to we? go somewhere we haven't been. Like, do we? I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube. Uh, that's true. <laughs> I, I, well, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, there was the article today about the guy who, the flat earther who wants to prove it by sending himself up in a rocket. He's essentially going to pretty much tie himself to a bomb and uh, hope for the best. Uh, but he's bringing parachutes. He did think of the landing, at least. Pause. Be that guy. Follow this guy's example and provide us proof. Everybody's got cell phone cams now or dash cams or anything that looks like a GoPro. So uh, what I am going to say is if you really think that the earth is flat or the earth is hollow, go for the expedition. And if you do and bring back footage, I will feature you personally. No, you did you see the did you see the experiment somebody did? No. Oh, some some guy out there did an experiment to prove the earth was flat because he did the math to figure that if you travel a long distance and the earth is round, then the nose of a plane would have to tilt to compensate for the curvature of the earth. So he took a level with him up in the plane, and the fact that the bubble never left the center proved that they didn't ever dip their nose. I know it's not how science works, but he, I don't want to live on this he planet. He put anymore. that on uh, online, and people have just eaten it up that want that to be their evidence of, of flat Earth. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. You want to live on the moon with the dinosaurs, hmm? or with Steve? I could be on the moon with Steve. I, I really could, because yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, totally. I took a level on a plane, and it stayed level. Ugh. Yep, yep. Ugh. We will not get into 
the reasons that that is what's the term i'm looking for stupid stupid yeah stupid as in slow no ridiculous is funny that leads to like comedy see ridiculous can also be something worthy of ridicule yeah true i mean that is the definition of the term but all i have to say on that is oh my fuck really did really anyway on to happier stuff so we're talking about doing the justice league right um doing the characters justice or doing the league justice. I couldn't pass that joke up. Okay, no, no. But that is one of my biggest complaints. Now, are we, how are we doing with spoilers on this? Are we warning people it's that been we a week. talk about things? It, it's been a week. Let's if just, you're watching yeah. this, we're probably going to say things from the movie that you wouldn't know if you haven't seen it. So if you have not seen it, save this video, watch it another time. Because I'm going to talk about one of the tags. I'll do the Illuminati thing when we're done talking spoilers. Well, the the... The missed opportunity for the final tag. Which one? You've got Slade comes on, which they don't even mention oh, Slade's name. Yeah. And so it's it's really only geared toward people who could recognize him in a vision. Well, in because truth. Because they say his real name, but they don't say Slade. Yeah, but it, it's cool because he's been featured in so many other Warner Brothers properties. True, true. I but, mean, from well, Arrow to Teen Titans. New, you're absolutely you know, right. And in Teen Titans, they always called him Slade. Yes, but my thing is, is when you're introducing a new, like one of the one of the examples I'd use is when X Men was doing the cartoon series. Each time they made an attempt at the cartoon series, they gave you a new mutant joining them, so that you could learn about mutants, learn about the school, and everything through that person's eyes. Right. So you have the original episode with Kitty Pride. You have and the then one the second one with Jubilee. After, Jubilee, and then, then the next the, one with yeah, Kitty we, Pride. <laughs> and, uh, but they had um, Rogue. Yeah, for the for the movie as well as for the yeah. animated series that followed the movie, um, you you always have something for people who've never experienced this world. Yeah, there's nothing for that in that final tag. So it is <laughs> it is not helpful to any. They see some guy walk in in a weird mask and a you know sword on his back, but um, I, which I really liked the introduction of Slade. Don't get me wrong, I thought that was a neat thing to kind of have the <laughs> we're putting together a group, and you have Lex Luthor. Acting more Lex than he did. Still not, in my opinion, Lex. Well, we want social network Lex. Not, I was auditioning for the Riddler and they put me here. I want... You want Clancy Brown. No, 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 my thing is is more so, uh, with Luther, I feel uh, he has consistently been in the stories somebody who is... uh, One of the main reasons he's against Superman is we don't need you. Well, Humankind is fine on its own. We don't need you and your alienness. Or we don't need you. They need me. Yes. I but built the fact Metropolis. That how much he brought, he used the alien technology yeah. in BVS was, in my opinion, a stray from that persona. Hmm. He, he relied a lot on something else, something external, something not human uh, created. Although I guess it did have a little bit of him in it when he turned it into a cave troll. <laughs> um, but I uh, hey, that was a Ninja Turtle. I, well, Ask the Bay. new ones that have lips. I have a problem <laughs> with them too. Ninja <sighs> Turtles should not have lips. Um, but anyway, so uh, he was at least a little more businesslike, a little more collected than he was. You're right, Riddler esque in the previous one. Yeah. But the last line was such a missed opportunity. I'm putting together a league of our own. Now it sounds like a Tom Hanks movie reference. It should have been, I'm putting together a legion of our own. Legion? Well. There's the reference. Well, there's the Legion of Doom and yeah. the Injustice League. So that's what they meant about the Injustice League. That, that's why it's a league of our own. They're not going for the Legion of Doom. <sighs> See, I don't know. I liked the Legion of Doom. I kind of wanted them, I, I wanted to be for on the table for there to be a map of like a swamp area that they were just, that he was seeking out kind of. I love the old Justice League cartoon, so oh, it's like, that's where my brain goes. Well, that's the thing, though. We're middle-aged. Okay. Yeah, but they're still, oh, come on, the member berries, it, that's what they're going for. Yeah, they're still trying to play on our love of it from years make ago. Make no mistake, it's true, but TV wants our dollar. The movie industry wants everybody's dollar. Yes. And our kids don't know the member berries yet. No, so. but we are more than likely to take our kids to those movies more often. 
if the movies pander to us as well. In the same way that cartoons that are more successful have jokes in them that the parents watching them also laugh. I, I understand. You have to pander to both, well, to yeah. all the audiences yeah, if I mean, you're trying to get everybody's dollar. Well, look, we're both Generation X, so we grew up on Animaniacs, so oh, yeah. we get that, you know? And they do pander to us. You saw the upskirt shot of Wonder Woman. But see, that's followed the kind of pandering I don't think we yeah. need. I gotta say it. Well, it was followed by the upskirt um, gratuitous butt shot of Cyborg. Oh, well, and, and, and the, the, they're, they're doing it for everybody. Oh, yeah. The, the, the half-in-the-water shot of, of Aquaman was obviously for people who that was their preference. Yeah, I think I can quote my mom on that with... Yes. Well, but it, it's the framing certain shots, like the framing of the one shot of Batman and Flash talking, and it's just Wonder Woman's butt, right? Right. You it's her too, huh? and kind of Batman in the background. It's like, come <laughs> on, we're, we're being a little too obvious. And you don't know who to put that at the pl foot of. Is was that a Snyder shot? Was that a Whedon shot? We don't know. It was very much a Snyder shot. Actually, well, you can you you can tell the differences between the two if you know what to look at. All right. Like. Specifically, all right. lighting and framing. I just, it, it was, that was done a lot and wasn't necessary. They are pretty people without us having to purely focus. Like, I think, I think Bruce Wayne was blurry in that shot. I think actually did the focus on her butt. Well, we'll, we'll have to watch Not necessary. Um, but speaking about pandering and giving the audience what they want, that fight, though. That like, fight was amazing. Yeah, well, the, fight, the, the two I mean, fights, and I, the one we're talking about. Oh, they is know which one we're new, talking about. Newly born Clark. Yeah, we're, they're, we're, we're, we couldn't go into this last time, but I promise we'd get into spoilers. Oh, God. And, yeah. all right, so I'm a lifetime DC Comics fan. Okay. As a matter of fact, anyone who knows me personally, as you know, knows that the Martian Manhunter is my favorite superhero. John Jones, hell yeah. Okay, but. Um, Batman can't beat Superman. I'm sorry. There is no way. I don't care about your prep time. Get away from your keyboards. Um, I, I, I'm just going, if he has access to Kryptonite, he's got a chance. Nuke him from but. orbit, okay? Nuke him from orbit, or left-hand karate chop, right-hand karate chop. But if, um, I mean, Superman can lobotomize someone from well, a continent away. Oh God, but in so. a beautiful moment of him holding his face. <laughs> the two great lines that came out of Clark in that moment was the, do you bleed? You like that was, line? Oh, it was such a great, as much as I was not a fan of BBS, it was a great throwback. See, I... Because that's the line that we got out of Batman earlier. I'm sorry. And just, it I showed didn't like it, it when memory. Batman said it. I thought it was a dumb line. My but line you can't Clark, retcon that it was done. Yeah. So this was a nice don't have way to, to throw remind us. Uh, see, <laughs> you know, I, I enjoyed it. If you're gonna throw back to something, throw back to something that was cool. You know, he could have said something like "men are brave" or something like that. But um, or could have said, you know, um, something about his mom. You know. But the other line though that was well, beautiful. The line that I liked. Uh -huh. Okay. Was you didn't want me alive. Now you don't want me dead. Like, what do you want? What do you want? I, I do not exist. I, Superman, do not exist to be your plaything, rich boy. Absolutely. Well, and for me, it was the, the line, and he's holding his face, and he says, yes, but do they need you? <laughs> was such like a, oh, he's just going to crush his face. And see, truth, I think that was the missed opportunity. Um, because Batman's next line should have been, no. You know? However, the end of the fight, when the big gun got there, and we know that the big gun are, is really Lois Lane's reproductive organs, but the way that he ragdolled Batman when Lois showed up, oh, I yeah. mean, it was like, oh, my girl's here. <laughs> and Batman's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Okay, all right, fighting him was a bad idea. Bad idea. Now, like, that was the Batman moment that I expected Seth MacFarlane to make fun of, because all I saw was Ben Affleck holding his knee going, Ooh. ah, ah, <laughs> you know, I mean, that that's really what it was. But the way that he just tossed him away like a piece of bat oh, yeah. litter. I mean, well, I mean, but he'd already, and they'd already demonstrated, like, everybody else going against him as he caught Wonder Woman, swing and it Cyborg, him, caught, well, but no, he caught Wonder Woman, and I think it was uh, he Aquaman, away, Aquaman, he yeah. caught but he had both of them, and Cyborg grabbed him by, like, the collar, yeah. and he's holding all three of those, and then we get that moment. That the moment that made oh everybody moment jump. The the entire mo movie. Yeah. We've got, ha-ha, I'm the Flash. I move faster than sight. And pissed off Superman is like, where are you going? 
and Flash is like, what? <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. I was just past. Yeah, you keep doing. He had that total deflator mouse from the tick moment. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I will come in and. Uh, oh no, you you do what you do, man. Well, but him still <laughs> dodging was still fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, there was the, just the you you couldn't quite hit him, but it was still the oh crap moment. This guy's moving way faster than yeah. I expected anybody to move. The idea of this dude has a chance mm -hmm. to hit me, and well, I've never met anyone that did. Exactly, and you know? the the only thing that it's it's a disappointment of mine, and I understand why they have to do it for cinematography reasons. Mm -hmm. But I kind of have always been disappointed by the fact that when we show super fast motion. It's always shown in slow motion. Yeah. People move super fast and they s just stop everybody else and then move that person slowly. And I really think just having that person move at normal speed would be more, more interesting to me. So the moment when you see Superman just look over, because while we knew it was in, in flash speed, mm -hmm. it was still in slow motion. Well, so I it was hard to, at, from that glance, gauge whether he was moving as fast as Flash or, you know, so you could have that moment if, if Flash is moving at normal speed. I, I see what you're saying and I'm picturing it cinema, um, cinematography. Uh, uh, I'm Cinem picturing it on screen. Cinematographical. Yes, Lee. <laughs> Lee. Um, yeah, that's right. As knows words, I, I, I do. I, I just don't speak them much. Um, and I'm thinking about it and having them move normal speed wouldn't exactly illustrate the gravity of of the thing, you know, because pausing everyone and having them move normal, that's something that you would do in After Effects on uh, with something shot on Shidio is the thing. Now I don't think they should move as slow. Because I, I think back to um the super speed sequence that just set the tone for the movie industry. And I'm talking of course, um, Days of Future Past with Quicksilver. Okay. Time in a bottle moment, and he was moving in slow motion. Yes, and that's but it wasn't as slow. It wasn't. Ha ah, ha! Moving super fast. Now I'm moving slow so the audience can see. Um, if they were to slow it down just a bit more, to make it look like they're really doing it, but they're also doing it leisurely. But then, how do you get that performer out of an actor to make it not look like? Um, because I see everyone else paused and the actors throwing real punches, right? But how do you do that cinema, um, with cinematography to not make everything else in the shot that's not the two people moving look idiotic? That's the question. Well, that's why I said it, it is a challenge and it's, I understand that, like I said at the beginning, yeah. I understand why we can't do it. Well. But for me, it's one of those things where I'd love to just see him moving, yeah, and just walking through a room and you know doing what he needs to, or or looking back at that movement and or the the looking back at X Men, that was kind of what I wanted from that was just to see him walking around and tipping the the bullets and everything and doing it in normal time. I've always wanted to see that scene. I get you, and and see that person moving in real time, just running over here and showing it, especially in the moments where he doesn't really need to rush. Yeah, it being done in a light jog, just like, <laughs> to show that he's got more behind him. Right. That he's just not even going full force of his power at that point. No, That's I'm, kind of what. I'm really right there with you. Um, it's just watching all of them try to take their effort at him. Yeah. Each one go, and especially even seeing some that never saw him fight. Yeah. Because you have to know that that Aquaman didn't see. Yeah, he wasn't at the Battle of Metropolis. No. And Cyborg might have seen YouTube clips. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm sure he saw YouTube clips. <laughs> I don't know so much as he saw them, he just knows, he knows. them. Yeah, yeah, and that was, um, that was, I'm, I can't get over how impressed I am with Cyborg in this whole movie. I have but, one yeah. flaw, I don't know if you and Aaron talked about this. Um, his, his costume? No, not with him, with the writing and the huge plot hole they made. Which one? Well, he is a, a born from the mother box. Yes. The mother box was activated at the time that Superman died. Yes. Where Bruce Wayne has footage of him becoming cyborg before Superman is dead that he downloaded from Lex's computer. Oh, see, that's That the footage thing. is him becoming cyborg. No, the, that's already them using the mother box. The mother boxes didn't activate when Superman died. 
but the boom tubes did as soon as Superman died. No, no, and I get but that, the but the way they talk like, about it. Hey, buddy. Hey. But the way they talk about it is they weren't able to do anything with it until after Superman died. Okay. But then that footage exists from before Superman died. Months before Superman died. So it, it doesn't, that was okay. a huge, like, they didn't see that crossover see, in my opinion. I never thought about that, but thanks. Thanks, now I've got another. Sorry I ruined that for people. Well, no, no. Um, no, I really liked what they did with Cyborg. I liked the journey that they gave him. Yeah. It did feel a little referenced to, uh, a little too parallel to the Avengers in him being a little Hulk-esque. Um, All this power, don't know how to use it, kind of scared of it. It seemed a little a little of that. I, and I know that's a trope that's not just used in Avengers. No, but, but it was most recently. The difference between them was that Victor is a college student. And what I really liked about what they did with his writing was now that the mother boxes are active and up and doing their thing, he's evolving. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know what's going on. It's just like... If he wasn't so mad at his dad, you he, you could pretty much see him saying, "Dad, I got hair in places I didn't yesterday." By the way, I can fly. I did. I love <laughs> yeah. that moment. You see this? Couldn't do that yesterday. Yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, and that end fight, we all know that that was Snyder Snyder filmed and Snyder edited and Snyder all that approved. Um. But there were certain parts of it that I did like. You know, I did. There were certain fun bits like. I like the fact that Aquaman fights dirty. Yeah. I really do. The fact that he headbutted um, Steppenwolf. And there was a lot of headbutting in this movie. Speaking of the headbutt, the headbutt exactly. between That's Superman and Wonder Woman was just, oh, when he just took the different angle. Like, oh, we're going to exchange this? No, I'm changing up the game. Took yeah. a little angle and it set it right down into the ground. Well, after three times. Oh. So it was like, I am an Amazon and I must, and I must do what it takes to win. Bang. And he's like, mother... This is how you headbutt so, And I'm just like, dude, yeah. Yeah, this is the Superman that people that people wanted, especially since over the course of that entire fight, not a single building was tumbled. No. You know, matter of fact, they pretty much kept it within a hundred square feet. You know, just a ten by ten foot thing until the flash got there. <laughs> <laughs> and the flash was like Okay, I got this. I'll do something to restrain him. And oh, son of a bitch, he can see me. <laughs> but on on the same note of the uh, pandering to what people maybe want to see, mm -hmm. we had a body that was in a full suit when revived. Everything but his pants came off, and yeah. he's standing there in just the pants with a nice, great chest shot. And shot. it was ah, uh, you are super. Exactly. You are and called I, Bunyan. I'm not going to deny anybody their chance for it, other than no, everybody know knows Henry Cavill is my man crush. Like even as a straight man, I'd be like, no, uh, all right, Hank. Because um, again, when I saw Man of Steel, and there was that shot where he saved the oil rig and bust in with like Paul Bunyan with that chest on fire and a little bit of hair, and I'm just like, I'll never be Superman. Oh, this okay. is where I officially give up. I'm more like Constantine anyway, but at that point, all of my hope for being like Superman just went out the fucking window. I, think I, I gave up on that years ago. I'm not willing to cross train that much. Like, I don't think Jesus is willing to cross train that hard. I, I'm still amazed how much. Oh, he, I can't believe I said that. That wow, that was that was terrible. I'm still pretty amazed at how much he also looks like um, one of the animations of Clark, or what? the animations of Clark. But also, he had a little bit of that look from um, the TV series. I can't think of the name of the actor now. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Um, I can't think of them either. Christopher Reeves. Chris, that's that wasn't the TV show. That was the movie. Sorry. You're right. <laughs> I, it, it was the other George, Reeves. Yeah, George Reeves. George, George Reeves. Reeves no, he didn't have George Reeves. He had Christopher Reeves. Yeah, except he didn't have Christopher Reeves' as charisma. No. And that's what everybody's upset about. Yeah. But I think, I think as a franchise, I think they are turning the corner and trying to speed away from Man of Steel and move closer to Wonder Woman. Well, because they need to. I mean, they, they, God, they need to. Yeah, because it, it was... It, and, in that BVS movie, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman was really the only nice piece of, you know, as far as the whole movie writing. goes. A very nice piece yes. of writing. Yes, she was, she was well acted, she was well written, the, the way her character development was. And I kind of liked that, that Bruce was giving her a little bit of like, why aren't you taking spotlight yeah. of her in this one. However, when she he treated it like... 
Well, no, no, I understand. Oh, God, when, when he mentions uh, Steve and she just hits him. It was a beautiful <laughs> I, moment. I don't, but, I don't, that's not the Wonder Woman I know and love, but well, I can understand. Well, she still has that moment. And I she, accept it. Yeah. yeah, I accept um, that that's Wonder Woman, but it wasn't what I expected. But the way that he was painting her out was like that she wasn't doing anything. Mm -hmm. And yet, remember, our, the movie begins with us seeing her save a bank. Yeah. And we know that she has done things. She uh, jumps in to save people at the end of the Wonder Woman movie. Like, th she's not not doing anything. She it's, may not be taking a well, leadership role, well, but the point, way he's talking is like, well, why aren't you doing anything? No, his point was, why aren't you in the spotlight? Because to know you is to be inspired to be a better yes. self. But you're still hiding in the shadows. Matter of fact, if you want a bat suit, go for it. I won't sue. But see, <laughs> I would say that the way she saved the bank mm -hmm. was not hiding in the shadows. Well, it was because she was in the bank, saved the bank, gone. Yes. Didn't talk to anybody, didn't talk to the press. But remember, everybody saw her. Just the people in the bank. Yes. So but, they're going to talk. They, they, the reason why I mention that is just because if you think of Batman, no one would have seen Batman. Well, the people would have just disappeared up into the ceiling at random points, well, and then there'd be like a little note saying, "Thanks, or you're welcome for saving you." But she was she wasn't doing enough to not be urban myth and legend, you know. It was she was still a mystery woman. Yeah, she yeah. wasn't Diana Prince, ambassador to the United Nations from the island of Themyscira to bring peace to the world of man, and that's what he was calling her on. It's like you should be doing this. But, oh, what's the matter? The last time you led, you lost your boyfriend. <laughs> and, again, Cyborg was my saving grace in that. Because it was the, he's right. Because, well, you were being a dick. I was actually thinking about your plan. But, <laughs> and I'm like, okay. The other side of that, though, was, it was fair for him to bring it up in the fact that she was telling him to get over a death that happened a year ago. Yeah. And she's still reacting to a death from so long ago. From World War One. <laughs> A so death from 1915, it was it was interestingly placed. It was petty, yeah. It was <laughs> it well, was, it and was again, petty. I don't see Bat Batman being beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no, not Batman Beyond. I don't, uh, uh, anyway, um, that's okay. Whenever I talk about Mad Max, I can't not talk about Thunderdome because I can't get beyond Thunderdome. Uh, but um, not my joke. Anyway, um, but yeah, so that that was that was stuff on that. Now, when it came to the other stuff, people like. You read the old school Batman comics, mm -hmm. although all that time ago, and everybody knows I'm a big Batman. I'm a big Justice League fan, huge because of John Jones. And they only give him his own title like once every thirty years. Other than that, it's on Justice League till the new Fifty Two when it was Stormwatch. But um, the the stuff that I fit, figure that people are really into that they really want to see is stuff from like the Grant Morrison run of the Justice League from '96 to 2006, I believe it was, and um, and of course the cartoon, the Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, mm -hmm. because um, that's the JLA that people know, and when it comes to that, doing a Justice League or Avengers movie, and Age of Ultron was hurting on this as well. You always come up with the one question that's difficult to answer. What is endangering the planet so hard that it requires this many people of this much power caliber? But you know? again, similar to Age of Ultron, for some reason it is centered in a Eastern Bloc city in both cases. Well, if we said it in America, we're 9 11 -ing. If we're setting it in Western Europe, we're screwing up our allies. No, but the, we but can't set it in Asia because that's the number one market, although Doctor Strange took the risk and put Hong Kong back to the way it was by the end of the movie. So if the movie is going to require leaving a large landmass as a smoldering pile of we save the day, where do you pick? Well, but I guess that's the thing. <laughs> South America works fine. Ooh. Portions of Africa work fine. Nope. There are, no, areas, <laughs> there are areas that don't have... The and I, that's the thing is if you're trying to be inconspicuous, mm -hmm. he didn't need the the um, uh, the the plant, the nuclear plant, for reasons of it being a nuclear plant. No, he needed the nuclear plant because that's where the initial box was buried in the first place. You know, like that nuclear plant, because that thing that he put the mother box in, yeah, that was already there. See, I didn't get that that was something of his of, of, of origin from the mother box. It's hard to see, but if you speak Snyder ease, which is, well, he, 
Um, the reason that Zack Snyder is a good director, okay? Now, I'm going to qualify this. Get away from your keyboard. Stop it. All right? He's a good director in the, well, y'all think he's bad, and I think he's bad when it comes to directing actors. He's a terrible actor-director and a terrible character-director. But he's good at storytelling through images. Okay, he's really good at that. And during the flashback with the last alliance of elves and I mean the last yes. alliance of Atlanteans. Three, and three were given to the Atlanteans. Seven you know. were given to the Amazons. And three were left on Earth to be hidden yes. by the races. Um, the world has changed. But um, where, where do you get that? That's where the box was originally buried. Because that, that's not mentioned in no, any of the. But the humans that were there uh -huh. were all Caucasian esque. Yeah. Okay, none of them were Middle Eastern. There was no Sub-Saharan. There were no Asians. Now, if you go back in time and look at history to a thousand years ago, where were the white people? Two places. Eastern and Western Europe. Well, Brit Britain was still very barbaric. Okay, so it wouldn't have been able to put together an army that strong. But the Eastern parts, the Prussians, the are. Uh, um, you know, what would come to be Russia, what would come to be um, Rome, all, you know, all those places, like up in the Caucasus Island, or up in the Caucasus Mountains. Though, those were the only Caucasian people civilized enough to muster a force that big for that purpose. I, and that's all that was left. I agree that okay. that is logically sound. And that's what showed up on film. I think that is giving them more credit for having thought that out. Hmm. Because the, here's the thing, if that's the case, then when the talk of the mother box with, with um, Cyborg's dad mm -hmm. should be a reference to this was found in, in Russia or this was found in this place. So that that could have been the reason they found where Steppenwolf was hiding. That's true, but and it's still it was not never too late to do up. it. Well, because it was never brought up. My point was more along the lines of, I think the reason that that, that was picked as mm -hmm. a location, not was particularly that that nuclear facility was where the box was buried, mm -hmm. but that they were looking for a place that was off the grid. And the fact that this had had the nuclear explosion was off the grid. That's fair. But the amount of off the grid that aren't cities that he could have been at any other continent, completely undeveloped portions of the Amazon forest. That's true, but would have been a perfect place for him to be. Well, again, without there's no cameras. They're not really able to see from the satellite footage yeah. if he's deep underneath the, the yeah. But canopies. hear me out. Um, w thinking about that cinematically on camera, most audiences, especially in America, would give less of a shit if they saw big old fight happening between superheroes and aliens knocking down a bunch of trees or a bunch of rocks. The reason that we keep setting these things cinematically in cities is because when a building falls, the audience understands. When a car flies, the audience understands. If you pick up a boulder of granite that's about the size of a car, you're throwing three to four times the mass of a car. It's heavier. But what's the sound that a rock makes when it falls off a mountain? Click clank. Click clank. It doesn't seem that hard. You know. But you throw a car at somebody, everybody that has the money to go to the movies in the first and second world really understands what a car crash sounds like. So when a car crash is seen on screen, it resonates more with the audience. But instead of 9-11ing a city of the United States, which is still too soon, any of our allies and anybody that would want to come see the movie, Asia, what city can you put a fight like this in where the sky goes red and demons come about? And the answer is, fuck Russia. <laughs> That's the only I place that see we can that. destroy. But, but then, Does what, then by, that, city? by that statement, though, then Avengers didn't need to take place in an eastern In Zarkovia? Like an Eastern Bloc city that's like or a made up Eastern Bloc city that's pretty much four or five miles away from the Russian border. I just, I don't know. Yeah. I just, that's part of the thing that feels somewhat reflective of Avengers with this for me. Well, I, I, I totally get that, but there's going to be a lot more movies that have like the universal destruction thing 
happening in the Eastern Bloc because it's the only place Americans don't complain about now. Because if you said it in South America, you're either screwing with the third world or the rainforest, and we're two generations away from being extinct as a species. I mean, come on. But so, that's, and that's, in my opinion, I mean, something that could have been addressed for why, why we need to protect it from the rainforest. Yeah, I, I, I totally get that, but that's not the movie they were making. I know. I, 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 well, that's my, I think that's my point, is okay. I was looking more for that movie. And ho than, hopefully there's something like that in the next Wonder Woman movie. I'm praying there's something like that in Aquaman. There needs to be, yeah, absolutely. Because it's like, dude, I got a whole bunch of stuff to deal with, and you guys are poisoning the oceans, and you know you're cutting out your own oxygen supply, right? Like, well, I don't give a shit if the oceans rise, but you're killing the reefs, <laughs> you know? Well, that was one of the things that kind of felt a little rushed as well, was hmm. his return to Atlantis that seemed unclear of whether or not he had been there before, because they all knew his backstory and that he shouldn't have, like, that he was feeling abandoned and that, no, it was for your own good. Yeah. And but they he's never gone back no. to find out about that or they he talked to the people who knew and could have told him that. They showed that it was his first time in the city. Yeah. Once the boom tube went out, you know, it's a, bi it's a sonic boom in the water. Aquaman is the water dude. Sound travels in the water. I get a, my my point is though that it requires a lot of us just accepting certain things and and or, or coming up with our reasonings of how they did. Whereas where it's one of the things I think hurt this film in not doing an Aquaman film first. Mm. In trying to do the group film, you have to do the origins of everybody so quickly and with very little detail. That's like, oh yeah, a lot of this may get explained later in another movie, but it means that it's rough to accept in that first exposure to it. That part I get. But again, I'm not trying to sound like an apologist, but ask yourself the question. If Aquaman starring Jason Momoa was released next month and Justice League hadn't been, how many of your friends would have gone to see it? Well, that is a valid question. Exactly. However, I think that a lot of that comes down to the uh, marketing of it. Because I will say that when Jason Momoa was given the role, I know how many of my friends were excited to see him portray that role. Okay. I, so it's why I'm saying it's a valid question. I don't know that it's as few as, as people are worried about. I'm pretty sure it was because of two things. One, Conan. Okay. Was he in Conan? See? You see my point? He wasn't just in Conan. They remade Conan in like 2011, 2012, starring him. He was Conan. Okay. And but Ron how many Perlman people were saying... Oh, I can't wait to see that. And that's what I'm saying is with Aquaman, there were people like, I can't wait to see this guy as Aquaman. Okay. And, uh, and again, what I'm saying is given Aquaman's history. Yeah, okay? it's a rough sell. Yeah, exactly. It's a rough and sell. releasing an Aquaman movie before the Justice League starring Jason Momoa, that would have been a serious fail. Even following Wonder Woman, it's like, dude. Wonder Woman was badass, but we've always known that Wonder Woman was badass. Um, they could have released a Flash movie. They could have released a Cyborg movie. But the moment you put that A on a billboard with no guest stars of any other hero, <clears throat> people are going to be like, the dude that talks to fish. And I see it being a sleeper hit, but that all-important opening weekend... But you don't, I don't see and that's this is the thing is had they done it in such a way where they actually did movies for all of them. Mm -hmm. Wonder Woman was the first one where we were really excited. We're not mm -hmm. going to get a Batman or a Superman one. We technically already did get Man of Steel, and Batman will get one after Avengers. That's fine. Um, but Justice League, but, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but the the thing is, is that if they did a Flash and then a Cyborg, and then in a similar fashion to doing Spider-Man Homecoming, where Iron Man was featured in that film. Mm -hmm. It was a Spider-Man film, but he doesn't have to be alone. Yeah, it, it could, could have be been an Wonder Aquaman Woman. film, yeah. and Wonder Woman's helping him, or something that that's part of what pulls him into the league. I'm kind of with and that. And that's what I think Avengers was did right, that Justice League missed out on, was we saw people get those closing scenes of badass Samuel L. Jackson showing up and saying, so we're considering you for this. And we also saw for Iron Man getting told that he wasn't being considered for it. That's fair. It painted a picture that made us crave Avengers. Okay. Whereas yeah. Justice League was kind of like, we're going to put all these people out there 
Now, for those of you who already read the and comics, now we're you already go- know these people. And for those of you that don't read the comics, watch the cartoons, or ever watch the cartoons, or any other medium that they pop up in, we're going to see which ones you like. Huh? And huh? that's I think that's part of it. There was a meme that went around for a while that I gave a lot of credit to the person who created it because it was so beautifully done, which was when DC was hesitant to release a Wonder Woman movie. And... Marvel went, oh yeah, here's a talking raccoon with a gun. Yeah. Like, they no. just a giant they took the chances. Yeah. It's and true. And there's a reward for taking the chances. And I'm right there with you. And if I'm you really wrote right there with a you. good Aquaman movie and let J- J- uh, Momoa Which is easy do a to good do. job. Yeah, it's very easy to do. And put somebody else in it that already had that following, I think you wouldn't have had a problem getting people in the door. And when you got to Justice League, you don't need to have guesswork or explanations no. for so much. We already know him going back to Atlantis and what the weight of that is. Right. Whereas here it's all implied. Right. We have to we have to make jumps of faith to understand how difficult it is for him to go back. Whereas if you had that movie, you don't have to make that jump. No, it's true. Now, we can go on to moving forward with the DCU since we're talking in, in, um, in theoreticals here. Now, word around the campfire is, as far as this lightning tone, they've been batting a ball of yarn around at Warner Brothers, and I'm saying, stop batting it, make it, we need it, we want it, and they don't know that they want it, but they want it. And you know what that is? Hmm. The JLFU. That's what I lovingly call them. The Justice League fuck-ups. They have been talking about a Booster Gold Blue Beetle project. And truth, I mentioned this in the last one because Greg Kinnear essentially played him in Mystery Men. Yeah, yep. And Greg Kinnear's character in Mystery Men is the flavor that we want a Booster Gold Blue Beetle movie. Oh, I wow. mean, Who I even... Who would you have as, as uh, Blue Beetle? That's honestly for Blue Beetle. Um, I said it. I said it on Monday. And I will say it again because I can't believe I'm saying it again. Are you ready for this? Okay. James Franco and Seth Rogen. Those two giving me Booster Gold and Blue Beetle would be great. Just make Seth Rogen hit the gym. <laughs> well, no, wasn't Seth Rogen, though? Didn't, didn't he do Green Hornet? Hmm? Yes. Yeah. And it was terrible. Well, Actually, I didn't think it was. It, it, I didn't think it was great, but I, I was entertained the whole time. In similar how I was with Justice League. I yeah. was entertained. Well, it was, it reminded me of something that should have come out in the 90s, is the thing. But you send him to the gym like they did, like Disney did with freaking um, Star Lord. And you let him and James Franco write a superhero movie about the gigolo from the future who fucked up his life and came back here for endorsements from company. And the mild or the pleasant attitude side of Batman that builds cool shit and stops crime with all of these gadgets that are on Batman's level. And you put them in a situation where they have to save the world, but they're still fuck ups and they're still funny. And you got something. You you really do. See, I'd go more with a little bit younger for Blue Beetle. Really? And younger for Ted Cord, huh? No, no. Do the uh, the kid that they've had on the recent cartoons, which are supposed to be like his his. Premise. Oh, Jaime! Yeah, you're talking use Jaime. Yeah, do that in Buster Gold, and because Seth Rogen, I like him. It's not that I don't mm-hmm. like him. It's I don't see him as much. Franco, I think you've got the casting nailed. Yeah, I think Franco do a great job. I don't see Seth Rogen as much as Blue Beetle. As you don't see um, him much as Ted Cord, huh? No, not hmm. really. And I'm trying to think of who would be good, and I'm not coming up with a great option, which is why I can think of several people who would do the other. Um, now, and this this may this may be you know again it's crossing over universes and stuff, and and but people have done it. We got mm-hmm. Daredevil turned into Batman. We've got Josh Brolin, Toby McGuire, Toby as Ted Cord. I could see that. I could see that. I could really could see could work. I could see Toby getting back in. But Spider-Man that's why I'm thinking shape. kind of more that fresh faced than Seth Rogen is. And and more um, hell, I could even go Andrew Garfield. I I, I could, could do that. Yeah, I could. He was. I think he was a horrible Spider-Man. He was. I think he'd be a good. Uh, yeah, I think he'd be um, a better Blue Beetle. 
Yeah, um, because one, Blue Beetle smiles a lot more, and he's the C-plus student trying to keep the F student in line. Yeah, well, and, and, and that's, that's what's good thing. about those two. Yes, I, I agree. And and that's, you know? I think, the thing that, that I feel more of a Spider-Man kind of vibe to Blue Beetle and how he talks and how he interacts. Okay. So, like, that's what started me pulling from that universe. Okay. Is and, looking at that, and uh, Seth think, Rogen does not have that as much. Well, Seth Rogen should be writing then. Yes, that, that oh, would I'm be, fine with him. Right, he yeah. writes fantastic. Yeah. He acts, he acts wonderfully. Yeah, he's a great actor it's too. Just, you know, it doesn't mean that you're necessarily right for a part. Yeah, but totally. Um, you know, we've got Tommy Wiseau essentially playing Greg Kinnear from Mystery Men. That's great. I, I'm fine um, with that. Yeah, I, I think that would that be, would be or James Franco's brother. Well, what's his other name? The uh, the brother because I know who you're talking about. Yeah, they come in families now. The fucking they Hemsworth do. boys, the Wilsons, and the, the Francos. The... Yeah, I mean, it, it, everybody wants to be a Baldwin. <laughs> um, and truth, that outside of Brian Cranston was actually my top pick for Lex was Eric, mm-hmm. Eric Barron, for um. For <laughs> now, I've been an Alec Baldwin fan since Beetlejuice. I mean, we're talking a long, long, long time. Um, and of course, he was once a superhero in The Shadow. I know. I was. I was I, one of my first exposures to any type of superheroes. My dad and I used to listen to the old radio programs. Oh, yeah, with Orson Welles. Oh, yeah. The re-air the stuff. It would just. I, I had cassette tapes of, yeah, of I, Shadow I bu- of uh, uh, the Bickersons. Yeah. Uh, who's on first with Abbott and Costello? The, of I course, had exactly. Of all of those things. Um, and they tried to be light about that, but man, did that not work. But um, no, the the uh, on that note, um, I think Kevin Spacey would have been a great Lex? Lex with a different script. Been there, done that. Bought the T-shirt, burned it in protest. Remember? But that's the thing. No, I'm saying if if he had if he had had a better script, I think he would be among the best Lexes we could. Have. He would, but he's already playing Lex. Is the problem? Well, yes, he played it in Superman Returns. And where he's kind of playing it in House of Cards. Kind now of. He's out. Which, never mind, also pulls him off of the, yeah. the table for anything. But kinda is playing? Yeah. No. True. No, true. it's not kinda. Okay, that, that but is But I think le- that's why my brain goes to him, is that's a natural character base for him. Yeah, and of course, Brian Cranston would have been amazing. Yeah. Um, hell, Woody Harrelson would have been great for, um... You're saying that now, but wait until you see, um... Wait until you see, um... Johnson. Just wait. Yeah, maybe. You know, because he did such a good acting job in Johnson that people overlooked the prosthetics and you've got to be a hell of an actor in order to make a 21st century audience not pay attention to the fact that your makeup is shit not that he's willing to shave his head Mm. john ham (laughs) see funny thing about john ham Uh uh-huh fans wanted him as batman no and i could see a better superman than batman either way he won't do a comic book movie oh yeah, he, he. I think him as Lex in a suit with the shaved head mm-hmm. and that calm demeanor that he delivers. The madman demeanor. Oh, yeah. he would be he would be a great Lex Luthor. Yeah, and truth, I could even see him as Brainiac. Mm. Not as much as um, how God, what was his name? He was really hot after Lord of the Rings and Fringe. Oh, um, 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 um oh God, now I can't think of who. No, then I'm not thinking the same person because I don't. Know I'm that thinking he was Walter. In Fringe. Yeah, yeah, Walter. No, he from was Fringe. good. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually thinking of, um, and now I can't the think of The dude from Dawson's either. Creek? No, the one from, uh, he was uh, Elrond in... Oh, Hugo. Hugo. Hugo, Hugo Weaving. Weaving. Yeah. It, um, I, I think we were talking about him, and I'm like, because the, the, no. actually the Brainiac from the Smallville series, I thought he was good. The guy who played Spike on... Uh, oh, yeah, James Marsters. Yeah, um, he, but, was, he was good as Brainiac, I so thought. I don't want to see him in any movie unless it's the Dresden Files. I'm sorry. Fair enough. Um, I w- but, I'll, I'll watch that movie. But truth be well, we listen to the audiobook, so come yeah. on. Um, but yeah, um, I forgot his name, and I should know his name off the top of my head. But yeah, he played an amazing brainiac and the actually he he played an amazing brainiac in one of the dvd movies um where i forgot what it was i think it was superman brainiac and he played a hell of a scarecrow and i believe it was Ar- um arkham knights uh, i believe it was arkham knights he had the how long monologue that you can find on the youtubes scarecrow in yes. arkham knights yeah in the because I, I know that the scarecrow in one of them is uh dino andrade mm-hmm. um but i don't know if that's arkham knights or if that's the other one or is that who you're talking about yeah it could have been arkham city okay but 
but the next scarecrow in that was just like over the top like great and he has that presence you know he has the presence of a british actor and you know that's what brainiac needs like a bunch of gravitas and if you stewart I think Patrick Stewart needs to do exactly what he's doing, which is not much. No, he's not actually be- doing a lot. It's in yeah. comedy more. I- exactly. He's doing a lot more comedy now. Um, but him as Brainiac, no. you got, you're taking somebody who has his, his amount of Shakespearean. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the Shakespeare he's done. Um, yes. He, oh, God. I, he has the range, I think, that he could bring a really he could disconnected, do it, he could do it easily. alien. Yeah, he could do it easily. It's just he deserves to retire where he is. He really does. I mean, he's put in his time, and he has actually opened up the eyes and tastes of the United States. See, he's brought more he, culture to us. I agree, and I would <laughs> you know? say he's allowed to retire. He doesn't seem that he wants to. So as long as he doesn't want to, I'm all for giving okay, him more that, projects. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. He seems happy doing more and more yeah, stuff. Th- I'm that's... still mad that I did not get to see his uh, Waiting for Godot in New York. <laughs> that's fair. That, him that's and McKellen. Very far. Oh, God. Those I'm two. I'm sure it was brilliant. Yeah, those two. But honestly, I don't really want to see Patrick Stewart in any other comic book property ever again. That's true. He, his being uh, Professor Xavier X, does, yeah. does kind of, that would be that would be too crossover. Yeah. But truthfully, I would like to see Fassbender as the antagonist for the Booster Gold Blue Beetle movie. Okay. I, I really would, just because I hated him after 12 Years a Slave, but no one can argue with Fassbender's talent. Okay, it really. And him being the dude that gets beat by the two dude, like the two C students, I mean, let's face it, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle are like the Jay and Silent Bob of the DCU. Oh, so, yeah. um, but speaking of which, like, what project would you like to see come down is my question. Like, which, which DC property? Because we know we're getting a lantern. We don't, I don't want to talk about which lantern we might get because everybody's talking about that. But what other DC property? Oh, man, that's a tough call. I, well, you know what? In all honesty, one of the things I'd love to see, and I know I'm, I am probably pretty alone in this because I'm one of the few people I know who's a huge fan of the Amalgam series. Oh, man. I Do would not say Dark Claw. to see something come out. No, not specifically Dark Claw. While I would enjoy seeing Dark Claw, I liked the whole concept. And finding new actors to play the mixed versions of them once we've introduced a JLA and introduced a DCEU uh-huh. to, the, to the extent that the Marvel Universe has gotten to, I would love to see, like, the, the casting alone would be just great to be in the room as they sit there and go, okay, these are our two actors. Who are we getting? Who's going to be a cross between? We need an unknown between Chris Hemsworth and a frog. No, uh, we need we need a, we need someone who's in between Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. Hmm. Hmm. Oh God, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts I, I would love to see that happen, though. Okay, would, that's that fair. Be, that would be phenomenal. I not asked as the a, question. Not as an ongoing thing, but just a one-off. Hey. Do it straight to Netflix. I would watch it. I would be very happy with it. I um, asked, you answered. There we go. What the fuck? But Crisis is also another. I was one of the things that really endeared me to the comics of of DC Universe was Crisis on Infinite Earths. Okay, I collected every every issue. Um, was a huge fan of how that story arc went. Um, but I think I'm already seeing the ones of the generics that I I was interested in really seeing. Okay, and what they've got on the mark. Um, for you know, coming out soon, I, I, I'm looking forward to what they do with with Green Lantern. I'm looking forward to. I want a standalone Aquaman movie, mm-hmm. mostly because I'll, I'll say it outright: I am not a fan of Aquaman. I have, and and I've been told by friends of mine who are uh, Wookie and Solar. <laughs> um, I've been told by them how often that well, it's just because he hasn't had the chance to be the Aquaman from the comics. Exactly. I never really got into it. Other than I did have a ton of respect for the time that he was walking out of the United Nations and they attacked him and he was just like, nope, nope, nope. Oh, you mean when he was being a king? Yes. Yeah. And, well, it, but it's also the demonstration of the fact that because you're that strong in water, imagine how strong you are out. Yeah. Um, and I do have respect for him, but he gets, he becomes the comic relief. I mean, the the uh, robot chicken did a whole thing that put him as, as the, did as family the guy. The joke. Well, no, yeah. no, I'm talking if you. Yeah. Look oh my at God, the Johnsons. Chicken, yeah. <laughs> he's actually the villain. They turn in the second one that they did of the really? DC universe. Hmm. 
Aquaman, because he's so made fun of, ends up like helping the villains go after the rest of them. I did not watch that much for oh, Chicken. I, I, I was a huge fan of the DC specials that they did. Um, but uh, even even when they did Brave and the Bold, okay, we were talking about this earlier, uh, not on camera, but the the Brave and the Bold where we have emo Aquaman. Yeah, and he's a joke. He gets made into that joke. So I'm actually as not a fan of what they've done with him. I won't say I'm not a fan of Aquaman. Right. I'm not a fan of what he's been able to do. I want to see Jason Momoa get in there and have a movie where we get this amazing storyline of a world we don't know that's here. Like what a concept. Yeah, exactly. That this whole thing's been going on and the, you know, self-centered humans aren't even aware that this is going on beneath their oceans. There's a whole world that can be had there, and I think Jason Momoa could do that film fine. Well, you should totally check out then. I believe it's on Netflix. If not, it's like it's it's in like the ten dollar DVD bin. Um, you should really check out um, Justice League of America animated film Throne of Atlantis. Okay. And it is it's Aquaman discovering Atlantis after the death of his father. So it's like super origin. Or you should check out the Aquaman Rebirth stuff. Because the last three trade paperbacks from the beginning of Rebirth, so we're talking a year, two years old, yeah, fucking amazing. Fucking amazing. He has a fist fight with Superman at the Washington Monument. And he wins in the way that Aquaman would win. Okay. Because never forget, okay. Superman is vulnerable to magic, and magic gets to this dimension through Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So what is his army armed with? <laughs> Dear Lord, it's terrifying. And that's what I'm hoping they go into in the Aquaman movie to show his kingdom. And I think that's where I, again, felt that, mm -hmm. that JLA did the, uh, a disservice to Aquaman and the fact that the whole taking of the box is so, it's not as much as we got from the Amazons. Yeah. And we have the Amazons established. Granted, for some reason, they lost half of their armor. Well, but aside from okay, that, the ones uh, that weren't in their armor, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna clear this up right now. The ones who were on duty were in armor. No, the ones that no, weren't there were in ones ar in there on duty I'm sorry. in bikinis. I'm sorry. The ones, most of the ones that were in bikinis were doing stuff other than prepping to fight. You know, it's Amazons don't live in their armor. Why are you in, in that chamber armor? if you're not prepping to fight? Um, because if that chamber is about defending that box, then the minute you have a reason to go in that chamber, you are going in there ready to fight. I'm sorry, but as soon as as soon as the ones in the chamber said, "Oh, suicide thing done. We're committing suicide. We're holding up the freaking stone door so that Queen Hippolyta could do the Indiana Jones thing." And slide. Um, but all the ones that were on the horses when they played I'm the best fucking the, game of rugby. In the room. Okay, I'm see, talking about in the room. When they, when they have the first fight, there's multiple people in less man, than full armor. You're going to make me have to go see this fucking movie again, aren't you? Oh, like you weren't going to at some point anyways, whether it be on Netflix or on DVD. Well, of or course I'm going to see it on see Netflix it again. again. I mean, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm kind but of a completist on that. That aside, we've established the Amazons, yet they got more screen time mm -hmm. than the world we hadn't established. True. Atlantis gets a blip. Even the fight was quicker. Yeah. However, they did show what Mira could do. Not all of it, though. Not all of she it. Could, like, it would have been interesting they if she showed, started dehydrating him. Well, they showed hydrokinesis. Yes. They made it very clear, I'm on the Royal Guard, and I used to work for your mama. Mm-hmm. And did we'll get back to this later. Did they her name? Hmm? No. Did they ever introduce her? In the credits. Uh-huh. In the they, credits. They, I have an issue with that. And again, you're putting a character out there. That people who've never experienced this this uh, this yeah. storyline, well, DC has been playing with that for a long time. It's like, look, if you want, if you're trying to appeal to the comic people, appeal to the comic people. If you're going to say this is new and completely unrelated, stop saying you need to know. You know the comic fans will know this because I'm, I'm with I'm right there because judging it as a movie on its own, um, as I said, I gave the movie a flush. No, I gave it a straight. I gave it a straight. I think it was a decent. Um, I think it was a decent movie. Definitely a decent way to spend a Sunday afternoon. I would not pay to see this in IMAX. <laughs> you know, I did not see it in 3D. Uh, for the, yeah, for the reason that I, I, I was happy to see that while watching it, even though it was available in 3D, I never had the feeling. 
Like that there, you there were missing movies. something. I'm sure you all have seen those movies where when you're looking at it, you know this was a 3D moment. They went, hey, since we're using 3D, let's have that spear go right at the people. Oh, you mean like Pirates of the Caribbean, the last one? But I think the only movie that did it right was one of the few movies that Bid P has given a, um, given a royal flush to, which was Gravity. I think that was the only movie that did it right. So if it's not on that scope, I I don't care. I think that Avatar did a decent job of it, mostly because instead of going for out at you, they went for depth. Yeah. They and that's how 3D should be used. They took deeper way, and it made it like you were looking into something rather than it coming out at you. Yeah, so uh, let's get your rating on this because we're kind of running out of time, and we've got to sure. get out of here. Uh, I, I would say I enjoyed it. I definitely had a good time going to the movies. I saw the fight I wanted to see. True. Superman took uh, things at the end a little too easily, in my opinion. I think Steppenwolf should have given him a bit more of a problem. Uh, you know, he's fought other people um, from the... Uh, from Apocalypse, you know, at different times in the comics and the cartoons, and it was not an easy fight. Yeah. But this was too easy, in my opinion, for for Superman. He didn't really need anybody else. Um, <laughs> it's true. It just could have been him, and they all could have watched. Uh, but that said, uh, I would I would have to go in agreement with you. I would give it a straight. Okay. Yeah. All right. I would Very I would good. say uh, maybe a high straight. Getting, there is no higher low straight. There. It's either a straight or no, a flush. No, but man. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> It may be higher cards if it came down to two <laughs> straights. Two straights, this might be a little bit on the edge of, of almost to the you know royal straight. But, um, yeah, I, I would say it was, it was definitely worth seeing, um, but it's not going to ever be one of my favorite movies. I don't know that I'll own it. Okay, uh, that's fair. That's fair. Well, since we are running out of time, ladies and gentlemen, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages and all that jazz, we are going to wrap up Buster Recap for this week. But if you guys have any questions or suggestions or just want to call us stupid or say you want to know what it is I'm smoking in this pipe, you can reach us at backinthedeck at gmail.com. Hit us up on the in the comment section of the Facebooks, or not the Facebooks, but the YouTubes. All the YouTubes down there in the doobly-doo after you like, subscribe, and share, of course, so that you can tell all your friends that you told this funny black guy that he was full of shit. And um, you can also hit us up on the Twitters. You can hit us up on the Instagrams. We do love the Instagrams because I want to see all your pretty faces um, made up to look like cartoon animals. And where can you find uh, DW right over here? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Bardic underscore DW. Uh, you can find me on Facebook as Dan DW McCann. And you can also, uh, if you have any interest in being a voice actor, uh, Crispin Freeman has a podcast that I'm one of the people who does interviews for uh, called Voice Acting Mastery. Uh, voiceactingmastery.com. And if you look at the field reporters, that's myself, Tom, and Maureen. Awesome Blossom. And with that, we're going to say you guys have a good day, good night, or if you're doing this in the middle of the afternoon because this is the 21st century, turn us off and go back to work. And with that, we're going to say we will see you next time. Bye.